Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Sao Paulo for live coverage of the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo 2014. Exatamente, gente. Bem-vindos de novamente à Intel Extreme Masters São Paulo para mais um dia e último dia da Intel Extreme Masters em 2014. So after four days of esports action and three days of StarCraft 2 action, it's finally our last day here in Sao Paulo. That's right, it's very sad. But the good news is we have finals day. That's right, two quarterfinals coming up next, then the semis and the grand final. We're still searching for our Sao Paulo champion. Will it be two in a row for Hero? Will it be two for MC? Or will we see a new name on the trophy? Exatamente, então a gente já teve dois dias aqui na Campus Party, dois dias League of Legends, dois dias StarCraft e agora é o terceiro dia e o dia de final. Então vamos ver quem é que vai levar duas na sequência. Será que a gente vai ver o Hero? Será que a gente vai ver o MC? Ou será que vai ter um novo nome aí se consagrando campeão nessa etapa da Inter Extreme Masters? So let's take a look at our quarterfinal bracket and show you the results so far. We have had two quarterfinals that happened yesterday. They were very straightforward victories in the end for MC and Jack G, who will face each other in our first semi-final of the day. Before then, we have two quarterfinals to head for, Major versus Hero and TLO versus Bomber. Então vocês estão vendo aí os brackets, o MC e o Jack G ganharam três na sequência e vão se enfrentar na primeira semifinal, mas a gente ainda tem duas quartas e finais aqui no Intel Extreme Masters. A gente vai ter tanto o TLO jogando contra o Bomber e o Major jogando contra o Hero. Então vamos ver quem passa aí, depois as semifinais e depois a grande final. Our first quarterfinal of the day is just moments away. It is our third quarterfinal of the tournament, of course which means it's time to introduce to you our two players. Two players who qualified in very different fashion. Our first player qualified in second place in his group. He is the smiling assassin and the current reigning Intel Extreme Masters champion from Singapore, CJ Enters Hero. Então aí vocês estão vendo o Hero entrando aí. O que é o que eles chamam de o assassino sorridente. And he goes up against the player who surprised many yesterday with his aggressive style and his play in Group D, no less the champion of Group D with four map wins against one. He is the Pokemon King, the Mexican Mechanic. He is Major. Aí o mecânico mexicano, rei do Pokémon, o Major que ganhou quatro, já chega jogando, o ganhou quatro na sequência no Grupo D, campeão do Grupo D. E agora vamos para os nossos casters em inglês e português. Time now to go over to your commentary team in Portuguese and English. Oh, Major can go anywhere without a DS, of course. Thank you very much, Paul. And welcome, guys, to our final day of the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo, or as Jan would say, good morning, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> If this was a Pokemon match, uh, we'd have a clear favorite here. But being on StarCraft 2, I would say Hero. In my opinion, he's going to be the favorite. But mm -hmm. Major yesterday, he impressed a lot. We expected Bion to take, uh, Bion to take first uh, in that group. And Major to not only took first, but he also mm -hmm. kind of broke Bion's confidence when he ended up losing to A-Bomb later on. So uh, very impressive showing by him yesterday and today going up against Hero. Uh, I don't think he's... He thinks he's the, the favorite, but uh, definitely when I want to look to su try and surprise him, look, he's, he's still playing Pokemon. He's well. like, I beat oh, Pikachu, no <laughs> way. <laughs> uh, but the, one of the cool things that Major showed us yesterday, in case you guys missed the series, you should check it out. It was a fun series that he played against A-Bomb, where we saw him go up against Protoss, and he even played some mech against uh, Protoss. And I know a lot of people don't believe in mech against Protoss. I think situationally it can be pretty damn strong. If you have an okay start, if you can set yourself up well, it could be extremely strong. And I would love to see him try to make Mac happen against Hero. Uh, I, think, I think it's unlikely. The way he did it and the way he was talking about it, it sounded like it's a one-time thing. It's mm. not something you're going to try uh, very often. So, uh, actually... First map, Habitation yeah. Station, you want? <laughs> <laughs> How are you thinking what I'm thinking? Yes. I believe, that, uh, <laughs> I, I believe that Major beat out Polar Knight. I didn't see Hero's map beat Was it Altezim or...? I would expect Daedalus. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> But, uh, you uh, never know. Do, you, do you hate Dallas as much against Terran uh, as you hate against Zerg? I don't find it like that bad against Terran. It's, it's not ideal, but... I guess now you do have uh, the, the oh-so-good photon of a charge to help and defend, but taking a third, it's going to be very open. It's going to be pretty easy. Oh, actually, yeah, the Dallas. Yeah, so he beat a lot of Wow. A little bit surprising here. Uh, especially if... I don't know, like I was going to say from a Korean, oh. 
you definitely should be ready uh, to for a big macro game. Oh. <laughs> 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 Both Hero and Major having a lot of fun. Uh, Major has to be one of the most relaxed players of all times when it comes to offline events like this. You guys won't believe it, but he's always smiling. He's always just jumping around, trying to annoy you in a funny way. Uh, he's so it's different than what people yeah. think of Major. And Hero is he's definitely one of the funnier guys too. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you try to push Major around when you're Hero, this might prove to be a little bit tricky here <laughs> as we saw. I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a great way to start our days off. Of course, today is our final day. That means we're going to have two quarterfinals, two semifinals, and a finals to determine our new Inter Extreme Masters champion. Right now, you're under six players remaining. Six players could potentially win. Two of them have already won IM before. I'm kind of feeling Bombers' chances. I don't know why, but I've got a really good feeling about Bombers' chances today. I think the two previous IM champions are likely to meet in the finals unless mm -hmm. uh, somebody else... Uh Get those an upset basically, which in my opinion, yeah, Bomber, as you say, might be the, the best chance for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Major and TLO gonna be a, a tougher story. <laughs> <laughs> it's always there. Huh? Uh, you know, some players they uh, have like uh, like Stefano. He has like, he has like this puppy dog thing <laughs> yeah, that yeah, he puts yeah. on, the, on his desk. Major, no, that's the DS with his favorite uh, game on it. I think the sickest thing would be if he's actually super far ahead, has like 200 supply mech against like 110 and supply <laughs> brothers army. He just fires up a battle, man. He's like tweeting Mr. B, like, yo, can we play Pokemon battles? <laughs> Either way, I hope that Juan puts up a really good fight. He definitely has it in him. He has shown us multiple times that he has what it takes to compete with the best. I am, I'm not sure ever what to think about his matchup against Protoss, Johan. Sometimes I see it and I always, it always looks solid. I don't think it's like his best or I don't yeah. think that he like really excels at it. But he's not horrible at it either. Like I would even say yeah. the opposite is true. He seems to have an okay idea of what he has to do. But I really think that somebody like Hero might, might be too much for him. So. He's going to have to play his A game in here. Yesterday we saw him with some very impressive uh, Tian versus Protoss versus A bomb. You know, he was attacking everywhere, pulling back kind of like Pult versus Hero, and Pult did win versus Hero, but maybe a little bit less impressive. So he's definitely going to have to do better than yesterday, in my opinion, if he wants to take a. Uh, take out hero here. Yeah, the game on Habitation Station between A-Bomb and Major was kind of interesting because yes, Major played well, yes, Major won the game, but also I felt like in the end he stimmed a lot and if A-Bomb would have had like, let's say, three defensive high templars, why were you grinning, Johan? <laughs> no, 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 well, just okay. listen to you. If there were like two or three defensive high templars, it could have been really hard for Major because on the same time he was losing everything on the yeah. other side of the map to DTs. It was like right down uh, there and then he had to win the game and he did win the game because his control was good, he landed some EMPs, but A-Bomb messed up a little bit. I do agree with you that if he wants to beat Hero, he's going to have to step it up. It's going to have to be better than that. Do you think that Major can basically pull off an upset like Paul did? Like play, play similarly, attack everywhere, uh, be very cost efficient, reset the Colossus count, which is also hard to do sometimes. Do you think Major can pull it off? I think Major is going to surprise us. I don't think he's going to just like play super, super standard, super in the line of predictions. You know, I think he's going to. Uh, I think he's going to do at least try, try to hit some sort of a funky timing here and there. First map, I would say if there is one map there, he's going to mech on. It might be Habitation Station. Uh, it's going to be hard to pull it off against this guy. Of course, the reigning champion of the Intel Extreme Masters, Singapore and uh, just one of the best Protoss players in the world. I think it's very safe to say that. Yeah, at the time, he actually looked quite unstoppable. I really thought that this guy was not, gonna, not going to lose versus turn anytime soon, but yesterday uh, I was proved wrong by Pulse. So definitely not invincible in the matchup right now. And uh, let's get the game underway here in a second. Yep, I am ready. I believe our players are pretty much ready as well. Juan just has to uh, finish off Pikachu with a final uh, water blast from... Uh, Blast toys or something like that. No oh man, he only uses that one bird that uses roost and heals himself I've over known. and over again and never dies. I, I, I took a look at his Pokemon team, but I didn't recognize any of them. I recognize one of the Pokemon, but Major seems to be a hipster. He doesn't use the old school Pokemon. Makes me a little sad. Same goes for his his, his TVP sometimes when he can play Smack. Mm -hmm. It's all about the first 150, yo, and after that everything didn't matter. The first 150 Pokemon or 151. Either way, the game is loading. First map, Habitation Station. This is the start of hopefully an extremely cool Intel Extreme Masters Day, and perhaps a day that we won't forget for a long time if we have a, a magical foreigner run, which is possible. Of course, Major right now going up against Hero. Later today, we are going to see TLO go up against Bomber as well. That's going to be one hell of a TBZ series. I can't wait to watch that. But for now, all eyes on this Protoss versus Terran. All eyes on uh, this base. Our red Protoss player going to be starting in the top left-hand corner here. 
we have CJ's hero. Hero looks ready, of course, calm and focused as always. On the right top side of Habitation Station, we do have a blue Terran representing Mexico, representing the Pokemons. Pokemon masses are there as well. He is, of course, Major. Mexico. 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 I'm not sure you say that right, but. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit always tries as well. He has a lot more experience talking Spanish than me, though. Really? Yeah, he used to be a construction worker. He doesn't. He doesn't show. I never heard him speak anything else than English, man. Ah <laughs> no, he, he can speak a little bit of Spanish. It's okay. the only thing. He speaks more Spanish than German, that's for sure. Either way, let's keep a close eye on the opening of Major. As we can see, the racks go down in his main base. No refineries yet, but it will probably go down soon. Even though Yom, what's this SUV doing? I guess just scout. Yeah, uh, very quick scout uh, here, and uh, I like the way he scouted inside of his base here for proxies. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this earlier. And uh, Major definitely definitely wants to be safe. Actually, we might mm, have proxy factories. Yeah. Well, he's not a, taking yeah. gas. This might be a very quick second barracks out on the map to punish some kind of very greedy build that Hero could go for uh, something like uh, gateway gas and then quick nexus. But uh, sadly for him, it's not going to be the case. I'm actually a little bit surprised because Hero has not been known to do this kind of really really crazy and greedy builds. All right, so Hero scouts right now the main base of Major. What he sees is no refinery. He's like. Mm. Are you going back to like Wings of Liberty style, no gas first expand? Is that what's going on over here? Because that's kind of like the signal that you would do. He didn't really keep a close eye on these workers. I know it sounds ridiculous, but there are some players out there who will just take a look at the workers and like, yeah. hey, you're actually one or two workers short. I've heard Tasia mention this in interviews in the past, uh, but perhaps Hero already knows, who knows? No, no, I, I highly doubt that he does, otherwise definitely, I was going to say he was going to start a zero, but he actually did. <laughs> but, uh, I don't think he should be able to know with just one SCV difference. Then again, I could be wrong. Uh, we'll see in a second. I like how Major is trying to sell this here, by the way. Yeah. He's, he's cutting with an SCV, and uh, I wonder, is he going to pull SCVs? How many and how much is he going to commit to this? He has to commit oh. a minimum. Actually, the Zero's going to be cancelled here. Major sees this. He has a choice to make now. How many SCVs does he pull? How does he try to make this work? I think he's going to pull like at least eight or nine. I think he has to, Johan. I think if he doesn't pull, he's it's going to be very hard. Hero does not see this just yet. Yeah, he is going to check for it, though. The Mothership Core is up to come out. and uh, Yeah, but the Marines will be there as well. Yeah. Mothership Core is going to have to choose. Either it's going to shoot at the Marines or it's going to shoot at this SCV. I know this build is looking pretty good. It looks like yeah. it's designed to counter this very build that Hero's doing as well as a very greedy one. Ooh, the Mothership Core is going to get in there, try and doing some work onto those Marines. Nice micro by both wow, players. Hero has to Whoa. be careful. It's going to take a lot of damage. This bunker will go completely uncontested. That doesn't mean that this is over yet. This is very simple. Uh, Happy did against a bomb. I'm confused. Yeah, right now. He actually sent only two SCVs across the map. Yeah. So right now, he might be able to get a cancel on that Nexus. Even if it finishes, I'm not even sure that Photon of a Charge could help and defend it. And in the meantime, Major starts his own expansion. So only sending two SCVs across the map, a perfect choice so far, but We'll see if he ends up getting the Nexus. Yeah, for a second I thought he was just going to try to win the game, which would have been very hard. Nexus. He has two SCVs here, Photon Overcharge. Oh, down down in like two seconds. A lot of probes are being pulled. And that means a lot of them might die. Oh, actually, one of those Marines dies before getting back into the bunker here and hero man he's gonna have to dance around a little bit he's losing a lot of mining time a lot of pros are gonna die no uh, two three four will go down so far as well so he should stop pulling probes that's exactly what he does he will keep the nexus alive though so he didn't lose that much he still had three workers and his command and his nexus is still up i actually think this went pretty okay for hero in the long run yeah but he didn't mind for this Point, I feel like it's up for the Oracle to basically give the opportunity to Hero to take some kind of a lead. Right now. Even though the supplies are fairly equal, and Major is just a little bit behind, I would say he's actually ahead. But you should forget Major gas and stuff is quite late as well, so like his additional factory and starport is going to be pretty damn late. Don't you think that uh, works in the favor of Hero? Yeah, a little bit, but uh, look, Steampack still starts. But, uh, not all that Ledger is already fully situated on his main, he's working on his expansion. Actually, that's. That orbital, I, I, I guess you could say second orbital is quite late, and he has no marine position. 
needs to get more in there. Yep, he needs that way more. As three Marines is not enough to deal with his aura for. He's forced to pull all his SCVs immediately. So he, he will most likely be after this aura, kind of like you predicted, John. Yeah, oh, let's see how many kills exactly he can get here. Eight in total. And well, not sure what, uh, what more we can say about this than <laughs> Hero gained a quite nice lead here. Major was not expecting this. With the timing on the Nexus and all, all the damage he did to it, the probes being pulled, the amount of stalkers uh, and units that he saw, he probably thought there is no way he could have made his target as well and started. At a five, actually, just five. This is a completely different story here. Mm -hmm. Oracle is gonna hover around once more, try to see if he can pick up anything, but uh, at least get some scouting information. I was a little bit surprised. He only sent four Marines in total, maybe five because he lost one to the Mothership Corps. But I feel that if he would have six or seven Marines there, yeah. it's a completely different ballgame. I think he didn't want to overcommit to it. I, re I even thought a bunker, a second bunker, would really help. Yeah. And he might have been able to get an Nexus, but he didn't want to overcommit to it, I guess. Okay, man, this... Well, what is this Oracle or us, man? I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Every time it's been scouted, like, I can never get in there and do more damage, but Hero somehow is uh, is drifting around in, a, in the air and uh, killing more units. The only man I've seen controlling Oracles like that is Maximus Black, you are. <laughs> that says a lot about that Michael. Man. <laughs> I'm not even sure that Hero could keep up with me. <laughs> 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 Archive is more than halfway done. Five additional gateways go down as well. This is the style that we've seen earlier this tournament from uh, Hero as well. Of course, armor upgrade on the way. Charge about to finish up. He's going to have a really nice production. Uh, or basically, he's going to set himself up for some nice production abilities. He's going to be able to warp in a yes. lot of zealots. He's just in a really good position. He's even getting some safety cannons just in case You know, he would have to worry about something invisible. Yeah, Major are very good at dropping. And this really is Hero's go-to build right now in Protoss vs. Tian. He actually, he starts Charge and Storm very, very quickly before he even starts level 2 ground armor. So if he can complete that before Major does any damage, Hero's probably going to be in a great shape in this game. And Major actually starts additional barracks before starting to work towards the third base, which on this map usually will be the gold. Oh, a Marine on the bottom right-hand side will run into a probe. And that's a very nice little pick-up here for Major, because Hero, of course, does want to harass a lot in the latest stages of this game. Right now, Hero's army, uh, I mean, Major's army, is actually quite strong. Yeah. But it's just going to be really hard to walk up this ramp. There will be some force fields. Of course, there is still Photon Overcharge. There is a defensive cannon as well to, you know, maybe help out against Robs, maybe help out against Wither Mines. Either way, uh, as long as Hero doesn't mess up, it's going to be very hard for Major here to be very effective. Yeah, and actually, it's a lot of Zeros being warped across the map. He's going to try for some kind of counter-attack here. Major should be ready. He's actually pulling back with most of his units right now, which might be a little bit of a win for Hero because he's he's just yeah. completed Storm. He's actually on the chase with so few units. Are you kidding me? Look at that hit squad, man. Three Zealots, three Sentries, one Stalker, and two Templars. Okay. Uh oh. He, he was going to pull back and he might go for the gold here. Or he could press forward and be very aggressive. Look, he's getting Warpism now, too. Mm -hmm. We saw that in the previous games as well. Wouldn't be surprised at all to see some storm drops yeah. in this game, especially because Major's economy, of course, has been hurting a little bit. It's not been an uncontested uh, Terran economy. The opposite is true with that Oracle doing some work and that crazy opening phase. Major is not as rich as the Terran would normally be in this phase in the game. So if Hero can hurt that even more, he puts himself in a great position. Yeah, and uh, Major right now, he doesn't have any vision across the map. Nice Widow Mine here. Uh, he's not going to uh, detonate that on that one probe as he snipes it. Pretty good because there is no detection. Uh, from Hero, I believe. He has a Robo, but no Observer on the map. Major needs some really good uh, splits over here, Yon. That's a really good oh storm for God. Hero. The second storm connects big as well. Widermine does some serious work. Plus two armor is not ready yet. Look at that sort of anti-timing for most of those Zealots. Yeah, really, really nice here. But uh, Hero, he does have the, the Robo, so he's going to start an Observer. And uh, he still wants to press forward. He knows that the Widermines have already been detonated. And Major, he needs to do a better job of staying away from these Templars, man. He's yeah. been getting hit way too hard by them. Arkles are so good in soaking up damage. Of course, they have those massive shields that will regenerate as well. Uh, it's not good enough for Hero that he can just walk up. Widowmines will not be here. At the same time, we have a bunch of Zealots in the main base as well. Heroes all over the place already. Yeah, he's killed 15 SCVs in total in this game. He's going to press forward. He wants to end this game quickly. 
He does not want to waste any time versus Major. He is going to try to send him back to play Pokemon as soon as possible. <laughs> <laughs> One very low HP Archon will fall eventually. Major even shooting in his own refinery for a little bit. At the same time, there is still Harez in the main base as well. There are some high Templars. <laughs> Major is doing a good job in his natural, though, Johan. Yeah, but he's, not, he's already lost a lot. He's, he's defending well, but look at him in the main, man. We have a lot of Zeros. We have an angry Templar in that War Prism ready to be dropped down and say, look at me now. <laughs> Heck yeah, that might be a really big storm, but still, Major's doing a fantastic oh, job going hanging in there. He's gonna drop it. Ooh, that one hurts. But still, look at the SCV count, Johan. 41 against 45. Remarkable hold yeah. by Major. How did he not lose more there? I'm not sure, man. That was some pretty good micro by him. Uh, everywhere in decision making. Like that sort of look, like normally the, where things yeah. spiral out of control and Protoss runs all over the Terran. I think, look, the, the answer is here. Look at the energy on those medivacs. He kept on pulling yeah. back, he let those medivacs heal his entire army, and even though the storms were hitting him big time, he let those units regenerate over time. And now he, he's in a position yeah. where he's on two bases, against the Protoss on two bases, he has a Ghost Academy. If he starts getting a few Ghosts, I think he's possibly going to be in a good position. He needs to be careful not to overextend yeah. here. This is not Whoa. the moment where he can be on the low ground. He's going to lose a lot of these Marines and Marauders, one with a mine will burrow. There are a lot of Zealots here. Get, does he get a juicy shot? Sort of. A storm will connect with most of these Marines. Major is going to have to pull off another impressive hold. Yeah, and uh, so a lot of these bio forces were in the main waiting for Warpism. Major, he moved out. He was he was not ready for this. Uh, Hero was hoping that this was, yeah. was would happen, and uh, this is what happened. That was the best moment for Hero to fight. Of course, the upgrade advantage he had as well. Archons are still here, soaking up so much damage, and of course, dealing some serious damage as well. Unit count shows us only 31 SVs remaining, and with the additional Zealots running in, GG will be called, and Hero takes game number one. That was kind of crazy, Johan, because I really felt if Major sits back for another 30 seconds, yeah. it, it wasn't all that bad. Yeah, but uh, we see everything. Yeah, of course. I definitely think he was assuming that Hero, he was on three bases, and he was going to start playing defensively at this point. Mm -hmm. StarCraft, since you don't know everything, sometimes you need to try and guess what your opponent is going to do next. In this case, Major held, and he's like, he probably, uh, he probably has a third base. He's going to lean, lean back now, try and macro on it. Uh, he knows yeah. someone only on two bases because Hero was the one with the information this game. Mm -hmm. So Major just assumed that his opponent had, had the third base. He was going to be the one that tries and go for some aggression with some medivac drops. Sadly for him, Hero was just waiting for him uh, right outside the... Uh, you know what we used to say when I was in school? If you wanted to get into a fight with someone, uh, I'll wait you right outside the exit of, of the school and uh, we'll settle this outside. And this is what 4 happened 4.30 yeah. at the playground. 4.30 p.m. at school. Eh? You got off at 4.30? Yeah. Kids in Netherlands are quite lazy. You know? <laughs> Elementary school, man. We had long days. <laughs> Except on Wednesdays, then we can get off at 12. Yeah, baby. <laughs> no, we'll never forget. Those Your Wednesdays, favorite day, yeah? those Wednesdays were the best Wednesdays of my life. You know? <laughs> uh, either way, that was a really cool game. And it's a shame, of course, that Major didn't have the information that we had. Because 41 SCVs against 45 probes, that is a situation on two base against two base that you can work with in general. Yeah. Uh, but uh, just as Johan pointed out, of course, we see everything. The players do not yes. see everything. Um, Getting ghosts on two bases is, is very, very hard. Yep. They, Terran is in general not a race that's really hurting for gas, but if you're trying to make uh, Metavax and ghosts yeah. and all your upgrades on two bases, that's the moment where things can get a little tricky. These things are expensive, man. Not Colossus expensive, but still pretty expensive. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Yonsu has second map. Maybe if there is a map where we could see mech besides be we're going to say this every time. <laughs> <laughs> Next map on the scene, well, Johan, if there is a map. <laughs> uh, as Johan pointed out, second map is Youngzu. Both players are ready. We are ready. Of course, keep tweeting as well, guys. Hashtag IEM and follow Intiox Remasters on Twitter as well. It's important. Show them that you love the fact that StarCraft is still part of their circuit because, of course, we want it to be for a long time. As uh, frankly, Johan, this is my first IEM in almost two years, not just two years, but almost two years. It really feels good to be back, and I've always enjoyed watching the tournaments. You should come more often, man. I know. It's just, uh, the, I'm too expensive, Johan, that cast money. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> always good to cast with you, man. Especially in real life. Online can be a little bit tricky. Mm -hmm. Especially when you wake up at 4 a.m. <laughs> and start the show with, Good, good morning, morning, everybody! <laughs> It's a classic already. <laughs> it's not as bad as your introduction to the Gum TV World Invitational, though. Yeah.
Yeah, for the people wondering what we are talking about, because inside jokes can look bad, of course, on camera. Very recently, Yo and me casted an online tournament, and uh, he thought the way that I opened the show was the most ridiculous thing he ever heard, because I just kind of rolled out of bed, and I was like, good morning, everybody, from my, like, from my room. Obviously, still kind of sounding sleepy and stuff. But once upon a time, Yo and me casted a big Warcraft 3 tournament in Korea, and Todd opened the show once with, yo, 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 what's up, everybody? I'm Todd, a.k.a. Yo and Melo a.k.a. the romantic human, and uh, this is Rotterdam. Sup. <laughs> <laughs> there is no better opener than that, man. It's, nobody's ever going to top this one off. We showed this to Mr. Miller, and Mr. Miller just died. He's like, wow, that's the most awful thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> He's like, you guys get props for that? Like, yeah, man, the Walker 3 fans used to love it. Either way, we have to just rehost the game lobby real quick. That's why we were talking a little bit of rubbish. But second map is on the way. Yongsu, can Major bring it back? Can he even up the series? Or will Hero take a, a convincing 2-0 lead? Deep breath here by Hero. Uh, he knows that he cannot mess up here. A few mistakes too many, and uh, the same thing is going to happen to him uh, as it happened against Bolt. He will lose a map, possibly more to Major. Gonna have to stay focused here. Keep on playing his A game. And uh, on this map, you think Blink Stalkers or Charge again? Do you, do you think Mech on <laughs> I wouldn't actually be surprised to see him bust out some Blink Stalkers. Of course, let's go ahead and introduce our players as the red Protoss player on the right top side representing CJ Enters is, of course, our hero. I'm so used to saying Liquid Hero. That is kind of tricky. You almost said it? Yeah, I got <laughs> close to it. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, in the left bottom side of the map, representing uh, all the Pokemon Masters worldwide, goes by the in game name of Windy, but we know him and love him as Major. Major keeps trying to change his ID, but it's just not going to happen. Nobody's going to let him, man. We're going to call him Major forever. <laughs> not just his ID, but his Twitter handle as well. Like every now and then, I was like, who's this guy that I'm following? And then yeah. I realized that it's Major again, changing names. Interesting uh, supply depot placement here. This protects him against in base proxies. Just because he goes to the ramp by the time a probe will be there, if he, if he was to be rushed by one to get a proxy in base, he would see that. Happy does that a lot as well. He always gets his depot in the corner of his base to be able to see uh, if he's getting uh, proxy. And believe me, these guys, they cannot be proxied. <laughs> I tried. It's, it's hard to make it work in PvT these days. There was a time in Wings of Liberty when it was the standard. The Muslim found out the hard way when Ado Scott put two gates in his base. <laughs> In a best of one format, that's very, uh, that's very painful. Shout out to the Muslim if he's watching. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Adel Scott as well. Le Adel. How's Adel doing these days, Johan? Is he still around? Yeah, uh, he just qualified for the semi-finals of the French uh, Championship. Ah, beating who, Marine Lords. So. Who else is in it? Me, Daishi, Lil Bo. Ooh. Lil Tut. <laughs> Fire cake. <laughs> oh. Okay, we had a gas 12 opener here by Major. I almost said Windy, but no. Uh, and we should be seeing Reapers being made, possibly a Reaper expand. Now there is a possibility he could go for a quick factory again, that which would not necessarily mean mech, but we've seen him use uh, something like this versus A-bomb before, just to try and get some Widow Mines out, go for some kind of drops and harassments, but I guess somebody like Hero, you have to be careful, because those Korean players, man, they know how, how to play against it. Sometimes you're going to see big stalkers, big stalker attacks, do a counter and uh, defend well against the Widow Mines, and you see a Terran player die right out, I can say. Yeah, we saw Hero be very aggressive with Blink Stalkers multiple times throughout this entire tournament against Kelsar here, for instance, but it could also be because he didn't really want to review his strategies uh, for, for the Korean Terrans, because there were quite a few good ones in this tournament, and two of them are still alive. So uh, maybe that was just like, you know what, uh, with all due respect, I think I'm better than my opponent, I'm just going to make some Blink Stalkers straight up and try to win. <laughs> and he was able to win with it. With all due respect, of course. Yeah. I mean, Hero is not a, he's not a mean guy. He seems kind of like a nice, he's a friendly assassin, isn't he? Yeah. He always smiles, the smiley assassin. Smiles to your face, stab you in the back. <laughs> yeah, Major doing a good job in denying this next from going down. And now that with the Reaper here as well, he might be able to pick up that probe. But the Munchie for is there to uh, protect that probe. Yeah, so this... I always lose my probe, always. <laughs> Actually, the, the, the Stalker is a little bit late here. One or two probes might die. Nice micro by Hero pulling one of those off right away. Major shouldn't stay in there too long. And no, no kill 
on the one Reaper here. Nice defense by Hero. Yeah, really uh, solid micro there. Bunker going down in defensive way as well. There is a probe on the left side of the map. Twilight Council is going down, though. Uh, I think that what, if, what I want to say before, if there's one member he wants to be aggressive with Blink Stalkers, it could very well be Young too, because we just yeah. see this so often. It's an excellent map for it. There's a chance he could be Dark Shrine to try and uh, pull some metagame off here versus Major, too, who's definitely, if he sees a Twilight Council, ooh, which he does look like he might be able to see. And I think this might, well, I was going to say it might be intentional, even, I'm not really sure. But he doesn't see it yet. He, hasn't, he has not seen it yet, Young. He didn't dare to get in there. Hero is like, my plan failed, I wanted him to see it. This guy is too smart for me. And Blink, the dose start here. So that probe hidden across the map, definitely going to be for, for some kind of proxy pylon a little bit later on. And, uh, oh, Robo goes down before additional gateways by Hero. Yeah, I do think, you know, this is a little bit of a safety precaution as well, because Hero has not scouted at all. Yeah. Hero does not know if there is a factory follow-up, which could be, uh, which is possible, you know, some Terrans do it. And Hero has been playing without a robotics facility multiple times throughout this tournament. So if some Terrans would go for some really quick Widow yeah. Mines, uh, he would be in a pretty rough position. Look at that stalker, man. He went all the way around. Are you oh, sure? oh did, do you think he had this planned? It's possible. It's possible he put his stalkers in a position where, look, five gates start now, so, or maybe... Uh, I don't think it was look. necessarily planned, but it's just like a reaction to one of the things that if it happens, you know, yeah. he's just going to be like, you know what, then I do this. We saw a lot of cancels throughout the tournament. Some went good, some went kind of bad. Yeah, especially Puck cancels. Puck, Puck, Puck cancelled a lot. Yeah. Puck was a little indecisive. A little. Cancelling the robo and getting like five gates. Ah, uh, that's what he does. Yeah. He makes two more now. Okay, that makes more sense. Right, nice. Wow, well, five three more. Cards. Six gate oh, blink stalker. A marine here might scout that probe on the left hand side. He's gonna go through the bushes. Oh, does he see? It? This is like Pokemon, man. When you're when you're scouting for Pokemon. Oh, he sees the probe. But yep. Actually, the, the pylon didn't start. And Hero sees this. He's trying to get away. Oh, I don't think Major realized. This this can cost you uh, a game at this level. I think when he's gonna see these stalkers, yeah. even though it's just two stalkers, uh, every Terran has it in the back of his mind that there is always a possibility of blink stalkers on Young. So he's actually only on two barracks. Yeah. He's gonna need a ton of bunkers if he wants oh. to be able to hold this. Uh, he has one tech left. First Marauder is out. He has 13 Marines. Tim is already almost done though. Yeah. He's throwing down additional bunkers. This is exactly what he needs, and he needs to pull SVs in advance. And also medivacs uh, are gonna be started very very soon. He should make some widow mice actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't mind in the doll, but he might think there is still an observer on the field because he saw a robotics facility. Stalkers go in. Stim is already ready, yo, and he's gonna Whoa. get at least two stock. No, maybe one. Maybe zero. He hesitated for a second. He saw yeah. him pull back. Actually, this is not gonna be good because Stim might expire. Okay, actually, just those. At by the time the stalkers start leaving this position, needs to pull as he visio on. Wow, he saw which is the bunker yeah, on the he high ground. He didn't have that much money, and now. Hero is getting into the natural of major sniping on those bunkers, man. Not losing too many stalkers at all. I think he's lost two so far. Mm -hmm. Those stalkers are going to do a ton of damage. Time warp goes down on the ramp. And those mules, man, they don't even know what to do. They get behind there, but they're not <laughs> doing anything. They're like a force field mule. Either way, 29 SVs against 44 probes. No probes on the production tab. Three more stalkers. Wow, the stalker count is so high already. Yeah, two medivacs on the way, but look yeah. at those units. They're already red. If he stamps again, he's going to lose even more hit points. The minivacs boost in there, STVs are being pulled, the mules trying to tank some, but they are not doing anything. And Hero, man. 17 Blink Stalkers here on excellent time warps, and I think that Hero is going to pick up a quick and easy win. Oh, no, no, Young's over here with the Blink Stalker semi all in. Uh, he's able to finish up Major, and he takes convincing and you know, comfortable 2 0 lead in this series. Man, Hero's like some kind of Pokemon on his shoulder in right now. <laughs> Netmobile. A little bit of a monster. Either way, uh, what can we truly say about that <laughs> game? <laughs> uh, you should scout more and not do this kind of build versus hero, I think, if you're major, because the double barracks here, it's very ballsy, you know? He he goes for very quick medivacs, and I think he want, definitely wanted to harass a lot, maybe throw down some extra barracks upon reaching medivacs, but sadly for him, it was a bit of a build order loss, I feel, mm. just because of the way he played it, and also, he could have been a lot more careful. Like, he tried to place Marines everywhere to see this attack coming, but he lost one on the top left-hand side when he saw the Stalkers. He lost the one just right above the, those rocks at his third base. And he had one Marine even on that watchtower. So he was already on two barracks mm -hmm. versus five gates, and he even lost a few Marines out on the map. This is, this is a little bit too much to be able to hold. Yeah.
uh, especially on Young too. It's very hard. You know, I often feel that strategies like this, they are decided by the very, very first engagement. If that goes good for you as a Protoss player, you're going to have a really good time behind that. And I felt, you know, in the moment he blinked in the base, and those bio units already had steam, which I think Hero was a little bit surprised by. And the uh, time warp went down immediately. I think that Major should have run through it, because there were not that many stalkers. And on that moment, they can't micro their way out of it. So I think if you pick up two, uh, dream scenario would be three, very unlikely. But maybe if he picks up two stalkers, everything could be a little different. Now yeah. he took the damage from the stim, but he got nothing in return because yeah, exactly. he ran back. He had the stim, but he didn't have the critical mass that he would have on uh, three barracks. Or something no, like that. of course. But uh, I'm just talking about that one uh, small scenario there with like that one stim marauder or maybe two or two stim marauders, five, six marines. They can put up a very good fight against like seven stalkers that have blink on food on. In all games, man. Hmm? Not, not in hero, Heroes <laughs> games. <laughs> hero stalkers can even blink when they have blink on cooldown. <laughs> Either way, Hero takes the comp to World 2 all lead. If Hero wins this series, he will move on to face the winner of. Let me just double check back. Our other quarterfinal of today, TLO versus Bomber. So that's going to be uh, after this. That should be a really sick TVZ series. I'm super excited for it. Yeah, versus Protoss in the other semi. Mm -hmm. It's MC versus Jack G. Yeah, a lot of potential finals would be a PvP, which is perhaps a little likely. It could also be a PvT, which is the most likely. And a surprise, I'd say, would be a TVT with both Terrans beating both Protosses in the semi-finals. Yeah. But it is possible as well. Anything's possible, man. Anything this is StarCraft. <laughs> These players, they practice so much and uh, they are all oh so good, man. This guy, Major, definitely... Uh, one of the better players, one of the better foreigners out there, I would say. But he has his work cut out for him so far as he is, of course, going up against this Red Pros player spawning in the left bottom side. Off Frost, could this be the final match already of our first quarterfinals of the day? Perhaps we'll know in roughly 15 minutes from now. He, he is CJ Zentes, hero. And in the bottom right-hand corner, we have uh, El Presidente. I have no idea if that's even Spanish, but it sounded cool. He's going to play as the blue Terran. We have Major, who's currently teamless. So mm -hmm. if you're a team manager, pick him up ASAP, because this guy is really, really good. What do you think that Major is looking for in the team? Uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next up. Some, somebody who can handle him, because a lot of teams and managers, I don't think they can handle this crazy personality. I, th I think Major offline is one of the easiest players ever to manage. Major online is probably one of the most difficult ones. <laughs> I wouldn't go as far to say the most difficult because there are a few exceptions here and there, but... Like who? Oh, let's not mention any names right now. <laughs> I don't want to have more people unfollowing me, Johan. <laughs> uh, we had a guest 12 again here by Major. Should be opening similarly. And remember Major versus say bomb on this map. I don't think it's. Uh, I don't think it will be easy to to forget this game, man. Because Major used some very very good mech play. Now versus Hero, he's down by two games. Does he try it? I don't think so. I don't think so either. This would be better spawning locations, though. I'd say like uh, doing mech on these locations should yeah. be a little bit easier than doing it cross map, like he did against A bomb. Once more, guys. Of course, you can find out all the VODs as well of this tournament uh, if you want to take a look at. Uh, Major's game against A-Bomb, if you want to see how Terran players make it happen. Taking a, a note out of Avila's playbook. Avila. Or actually adding a, a page adding a to note. his playbook, because <laughs> that, was, that was pretty sick what he, what he pulled off. First replay is on the way, unfortunately for Major. He is scouting in the wrong direction, as we see, as we heading to the right top side of this map. What is Hero going to do? I feel that he's going back to what we've seen him do all weekend long, Johan. Just uh, the quick Nexus, perhaps the Stargate follow-up, and behind that, the Twilight Council with quick charge, quick storm, some armor upgrades. Yeah, it really seems like it's his go-to style right now, be it with a Stargate or not. But he's done, he's done pretty well with the Stargate and Habitation Station earlier. But he had a couple disastrous games with those Oracles, in particular against Bolt. So Gonna have to keep that in mind here, and if Major is able to scout this target, I would definitely say he's gonna have a much better chance at winning than uh, when not. Man, that habitation station game, uh, I'm, I'm having a hard time getting over it. Like, yeah. how do you deal with this kind of losses uh, as Terran? You have two Marines out of position, and then you lose eight SCVs because of it. This is really an unforgivable matchup. It is. Reaper hops into the main base. Stalker is a, is a long way from uh, completing. Maybe he's able to get a bit probe kill, but. That Monastery Core will always be on his tail. Second Rex is on the way as well. Okay, so uh, no quick factory actually. 
even on these positions. I guess he had already started the... It's, it's really risky, though, to yeah. do that with the command center. A very quick forge over here by Hero, Johan. Perhaps uh, he's worried about some crazy Widow Mind play. Yeah, since he cannot get a scout on the four players map uh, in the current situation with his Mothership Core, he, uh, getting this is going to make him very, very safe. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see even a Robo follow this up. Even though it's still possible, he could just add on extra gateways. Usually when you see a forge like this early on, you see a Robo with it. Uh, I, I think it's going to be a Twilight, two gates, then a Robo, and then more gates. Nah, he wipes in the Robo right now. You think he's going to open Colossus, or is it just for Observer? Yeah, that's possible. Usually you always get uh, Ground Armor first, which is what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, getting the Robo like this, we saw MC. Remember MC versus Bomber on this map? Actually, he got the Robo. Then he made two gateways and then the Twilight. He just made the Robo basically to be safe, to get some Observers out there, yeah. get some good map control and map vision. But... Uh, Colossus is possible as well, even though Hero, we, I don't think I've ever seen him. Yeah, I guess pulled on Altazim, but it didn't go that well for him. <laughs> uh, I, I think that's the case as well. Some players just love to open up with uh, High Templars, and I think Hero is one of them. We might see him get three observers, one on the side of the map of Major, and then two of them, perhaps one over here, and one on the north side of his natural. But we will see. Major is trying to really get in there with the Dreeper. Oh, oh my god, six Stalker what? positioning. I didn't even know that was possible. How was possible. there even space? Well, that stalker just loves hugging you. Huh? That's like hero pushing major earlier. Like he, he couldn't make <laughs> him move, and now he made him move. I, I didn't even know that was an option. But scan went down in the main, and the robo and the forge was spotted here by major. So he's gonna know exactly where he's at. He knows that there cannot really be much more than uh, than that. Like you don't really go robo like this gateway forge and hide like six gates on the map and then do an immortal bust. <laughs> he didn't spot the gases on the expansion though, which would have been nice. Yeah, a lot of gas being mined for uh, Hero already. He will warp in the Robo Blade. So he's going to switch things up a little bit over here. And he will most likely open up with Colossus once more. He's getting the Twilight too. Meanwhile, the Reaper is uh, taking a couple of shots from the Stalkers. So we might see him open up with those Blink Stalkers and the Colossus. Maybe yeah. uh, maybe taking a Hero learning from A-Bomb, son. <laughs> he's like watching A-Bomb versus Beyond. He's like, hmm, not bad. I think uh, Major... He was going to go and force a photon overcharge, but he's changed his mind. He's trying to catch that stalker here, because it was here just a second ago, trying to chase that Reaper away. Both players doing a pretty good job of scouting, actually. Hero, he has the watchtower control. He got some units at the bottom. It would be funny if he scanned for that Observer here. Actually, not going to see it. And does he go for two additional barracks or a third commencer, do you think? Um, knowing Major, well, he's throwing down one Rex. I wouldn't be surprised to see him throw down two more Rex <laughs> and then the command center. By the way, this was, again, Double racks only for a long time until he takes to minivacs. Yep. So pretty risky here, but he did a sick job of scouting and he saw he was up against a robo, so gonna be perfectly safe for now. Blink starts before uh, Thermal Lens, of course, as we had one Colossus start. And yeah, this is the same build that we saw Hero do before versus Pulse, in which I mentioned that we've seen Naniwa and other good Protoss players uh, pull this off before against top 10 players. This is a very solid style. I would say that the definite weakness of it, as you mentioned before, remember? The, those SCV pulls and those big attacks with lots of Vikings. Yep, especially on uh, maps where there are a lot of cliffs or terrain changes where Vikings can be in a safe spot and get a couple of free hits off. That is exactly what happened on Altazim, and that's why his Gloss took so much damage and why Paul was able to overrun him. It's going to be harder for Mages to find himself in a similar position uh, on Frost, but we will see. This bull shouldn't really be able to do any damage at all with uh, the sentries over here with that Colossus. Yes, the Metafax are here, but ooh, Colossus is a little oh. bit out of position. No Thermal Lancers yet. He needs uh, a couple of force fields. Exactly what he does. Uh, both there is doing the dance here for a second. The Marine is going to be traded for a sentry. So good trade for Major, but he did steam his entire army almost. Mm. Yeah, third command center is going down on location even. He's proxying it all the way, or not really proxying, but just bowling it over here all the way on the right side. Interesting cannon in the main, man. This is the, the, the in-control cannon, man. <laughs> Why is it the in-control cannon? <laughs> he, I remember commentating this game with him where he said like he always likes to get like a single cannon like this. And I thought it was actually kind of bad, but now I see heroes do it. <laughs> I, I think when you play Colossus, it, it is nice, though. Because like it's harder to split up your army properly. and it is Because yeah. you don't want to have your Colossus exposed somewhere, because then it could die and then you can straight up lose the game. So single cannon to help out against drops for now, keep those gateways alive or keep those pinets up at all costs. Yes. Kind of smart. I have to say, as much as this is a good strategy and build here by Hero, uh, we mentioned the w one of the weaknesses, but one very important thing to remember as well is that if the Terran plays passive, like you, when you do this build, you kind of hope he will play aggressive, because you have Colossus and you have Blink, you can exactly. defend very well. But Major, he's identified what he's up against, and right now, 
is amassing a huge army. And if he hits some kind of timing on three bases with an SCV pull or not, this is going to be quite deadly. Uh, Major is going to see this army move out over yeah. here on the right side of the map. Uh, he was loading up some units, but I think he's sending everything back right now. Yeah, this, of course, is scary push. How many Vikings do we have? Uh, only four of them. He's going to try to get a couple of free shots off here, and the Stalkers are out of position. Here are those Vikings working on one Colossus. Or oh, might be able to get it. The Stalkers, man, they came back on time. Actually, this is not worth it here for... Major is forgetting some of his units here. By the way, oh, on his yeah. third base, he lost three out of four Vikings oh, already. This is the worst position ever. He's if he gets force fielded, man. He's gonna try to send with his army two Colossus alone HP, but there's still a lot of poisons remaining, a lot of Link Stalks over here as well. And Heroes knocking on the front door of Major, and Major is in a lot of trouble. Yeah, some pretty good micro here by Hero, perfect positioning. He's kept it, both of his Colossi are alive. Look at the hit points, man. Yeah. They got so many kills already. And plus one. Armor will finish here in a second for Major, but he's lost oh so much, man. He had a supply lead, and all of a sudden he's falling supply behind. I like the idea with the Vikings, it was good, but perhaps he was just taking around for one volley too much, because losing three out of four Vikings before the fight starts against a uh, three Colossus push, that could be very tough. Um, uh, Hero is going to find this base over here on the north side, uh, here uh, Major's original third. And he's going to be able to most likely finish it off. I don't see any way how this command center is going to survive. The SCVs will fall wow. as well. And man, that was not even an orbital. Hero no. right now, I cannot even believe he attacked with just this, man. This was such an insane timing and so hard to pull off. But with good force fields, good positioning and good reaction against those Vikings, he's able to, to gain a quite nice lead here. He wants to send Major back to play uh, on his DS, man. He's like, you want to open with a ceremony against me? I'm going to help you with that. And Major right now is, is falling quite far behind in this game. Yep, uh, he's 13 workers down, he's a base down as well. And above all, Storm is on the way, so... You could almost say there is only one option for Major, that is try to get out as many Vikings as you can and then pull all those SVs yeah. and hope that Storm is not ready yet. Uh, but I have a hard time imagining that this is possible. That's not quite the pre-Storm timing I, I had in <laughs> mind when I saw Hero go for this. <laughs> <laughs> Usually the Terran has a lot more supply and uh, he pulls the SVs as well. In this case, I think Storm might even finish before the fight begins. We don't have any high tempers on the map just yet. Two more cannons go down. I'm not sure where they are going down. Stalk is looking for a couple of free hits on these medevacs. Uh, of course, plus two armor did finish up for Hero already the as well. The core is full on energy as well. That's really going to help. And Hero's buying time with his Stalkers here. Major, he does not dare to commit just yet. I'm sure we're going to have some kind of SCV pull yeah, here he in a second. Uh, there's, there's sadly, no way. sadly for him, this might go really bad as Storm will finish on time. Yeah, okay, we just have a single High Templar though. One Storm can do sick damage, but still. Second High Templar being wiped in right now. A couple of Stalkers had no vision of the Zelnaga Watchtower, and one of them will fall. Storm just completed. Mm. And two extra gateways being made here for Hero. I'm surprised it's not more. He needs to, he's still making a lot of probes, actually. I don't think he realized that he's on three bases with uh, a really good saturation. He's, he, don't get me wrong, I don't think he's going to lose because of that, but uh, if he knew right now exactly where he's at, he would only be making units and preparing for the upcoming attack of his opponent. The SCVs are being pulled, and the, an observer is just right above them. <laughs> I can see you, man. So Hero knows exactly what is up. We have 12 Vikings against 5 Colossus. A few more Vikings are on the way. We have a lot of Marauders against a pretty stalker heavy composition, but we also have 17 Zealots. Army supply. Exact same Army Supply. It is close, but of course, armor upgrade advantage in favor of Hero, and he will have storms. Yeah, Here are have all those Vikings. And Photon Overcharge as well. And Major is going to get in there. Yep, a lot of uh, cannons going down. Four cannons in total. Monoship Core will fall, but not before it casts Photon Overcharge. Hero even abandoning his base for now, yo, and he's realizing that, hey, maybe I don't have to rush things. Maybe I should. Oh my god, he's hallucinating so many Colossus. He's pulling the probes as well. He's sending in the probes. Huh? The entire army of Major is being stormed right now. Everything's disappearing very, very quickly. Three Colossus are still left and are going to completely wreck this army. Major scans. He has to know this is it. And GG is going to be called. Hero takes the series 3 to 0. Clean victory for Hero here, a clean sweep as he will move on to the semi-finals, getting closer and closer to uh, repeating his impressive feat of the Intel Extreme Masters in Singapore, where he was our reigning champion. He is going to go up against the winner of our next quarterfinals, which will be played between Liquid TLO and Bomber. Uh, Hero just walking over to Mage's booth. Pretty cool series. Uh, he should take his DS and live with it. <laughs> <laughs> Click on like the uh, cartridge and just pull it out of the DS. Anyway, <laughs> this belongs to me now. Uh, yeah, either way, it was fun, but Hero just a little too good. Yeah, definitely too good in this series. Major maybe a little bit disappointing and was unfortunate at, at, yeah. at some points.
I guess you could say as well, but uh, losing to this guy is no shame as he's one of the very best Protoss players out there in my opinion. Yeah, game one was actually a really uh, excellent game where Major was pulling off an almost impossible hold and at a certain point yeah. put himself in a good position. Then unfortunately he ran into a bunch of Protoss units and I, uh, perhaps that game was a little bit demotivating as well because he must have felt like, wow, that was such a good hold by me. I killed so many units. How can he have so much again? But that was pretty much all that Hero had. Do you think he in game one if Major, after holding the initial rush, he had mm -hmm. made like four bunkers up his ramp in a line so yeah. that Hero cannot go up, he would have won? I mean, would have won is, is hard to say, but the game would have <laughs> gone on. Was, no, the game would go yeah. on for a long time. The game would not finish in the near future because, you know, 45 pro protos on two base with no third going up, it's not all that bad. Uh, second game, You've things... You've been there, huh? Yes. 46. That's pretty high already for me, Johan, most of the time. Uh, either way, it was cool. Hero looking really good, as we said already before. He will go up against the winner of our next series, Liquid TLO against... Uh, Red Bulls Bomber, no, no more Star Tail Bomber, just Red Bulls Bomber. It's going to be a six series. I believe Apollo and KLRS will be bringing you the series. Johan, any final thoughts before we throw it to commercial break? Uh, I would say after watching this series, I'm really looking forward to, to Hero's next match because he's played well here, but he's going to have a big test against in the semifinals. Mm -hmm. So uh, first, I guess we have to find out who he's going to be facing with our next match. Well, I'm excited for some Terran vs. Zerg. Hopefully you guys are too. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with much more StarCraft from our final day of the Intel Extreme Masters, Sao Paulo.